our blogs for this month. The theme is speak your mind, state your pleasure. And we got this from something that Betty's mother told her. She always used to look at her from the time she was two and she would say, Betty Ann, never be afraid to speak your mind. And I don't think that many of us had that experience. And as women, it's so hard to speak our truth, to state our pleasure. And then when it comes to sexuality, who finding your sexual voice mm -hmm. is, is a rough one. So I thought we could pose this question to our bloggers and how they connected to pleasure and being able to state their pleasure. And uh, we could learn a lot. Yes. And, you know, this, this was a tough post. Um, we got four responses. And I think that that just shows how hard of a topic this is. Because as women, our culture raises us to be pleasers. And so sometimes it's even hard for us to know, like, what our pleasure is, let alone speak our mind about it. Um, so let's break it down. Emily's, Emily's writing is always just amazing. And as always, she hit it out of the park with this one. Her one line. Do you want to read it to us, Laura? Yes. Now that I found you, my younger selves, I want you to know that I believe you, all of you. I promise I will never shut down your emotions or wisdom again. There are so many moments in this post that you will relate to being with lovers and, and not being able to say no and not being able to say yes and being manipulated mm -hmm. and kind of how it is when we're, we're young women and we're trying to find our way and we're trying to explore and it's all about someone else's pleasure. You want to scream. Like as I was reading it, I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> because I, I was there too. Mm-hmm. And I think this is true as women, we have to forgive ourselves for having no support and being thrown out into the world. And, you know, no, we're drowning, right? Yeah. You're trying to keep your head above water and you're trying to also have fun and have joy in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is my favorite post of Emily's. I, I feel like I say that every month, but <laughs> I just, I could relate to so much of what she said. So, and I think many women will relate to it. So yeah, I, it's a high recommend. Um, our next post is from Lakota and her one liner is little by little, as time goes by, I find myself one piece at a time, my body confirming what I know with bits of pleasure. And by the end, alongside pleasure, I find and hold myself deeply. And this is how masturbation is a tool for self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we know what we want? That's the biggest thing I hear from clients. They say, oh, my lover says, what do you want? Ask me that. And I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. Because if you're only doing what someone else wants and you don't have the time and space to explore, and that's what happens to us as young women, right? We're 17, 18, 19, and we're swept up into a relationship, right? We don't get mm -hmm. that time in that space. Mm -hmm. So masturbation is like a meditation to connect to myself, to truly understand who I want and what I need. Yes. Yes. And Lakota writes about how her younger self, she knew what she didn't want, um, but she didn't really know what she wanted. And masturbation brings herself, she, it brings her back to herself, both for sexual pleasure and just pleasure and what she wants outside the bedroom too. So it's definitely a meditation on self-love. I use masturbation as a, a tool to manifest. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm working on a project or I'm, I'm stuck with a client or I need to write something, anything that I'm doing, um, even being a mom, if I masturbate, all of a sudden I start cycling that creative energy and it comes to me. Yes, yes, yes. So really a beautiful piece from Lakota this month. Now, Rachel is one of our newer writers and I loved her piece too. I, it, there's just, there's so much, like you're just cheering her on at the end. Um, so her quote is, then he said, real men always let their girlfriends have girlfriends. My mind was blown. I love this story. They're teenagers heard a girlfriend met this uh, young man. I think they went to school together mm -hmm. and this was his concept. And it shows you how sex positivity is a ripple that goes, mm -hmm. you know, once you're sex positive and you throw out some concepts, it changes lives. And so her and her girlfriends used to have what they called orgies 
in this basement with their grandparents who were upstairs, you know, watching the girls and they would all make out and do heavy petting. It wasn't really an orgy proper. Um, but what a wonderful way to start flexing that muscle and start expressing yourself sexually where you're completely safe. Yes. And outside of that model of romantic love, you're just experimenting, you're exploring and you're supporting each other. It it, it reminds me of a body sex circle, you know? <laughs> Very much so. And um, when Rachel put this on her Facebook page, they took it down. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to discuss things like teenagers connecting to their sexuality. So we can, you know, uh, have sex trafficking in Facebook marketplace. <laughs> we can have, you know, all kinds of things going on, videos of underage girls twerking. Um, but really young women yes, being yeah. in control of their sexuality. Oof, mm -hmm. That's scary. Yes. And what a healthy, what a healthy way to grow and mm -hmm. learn about your bodies um, yeah, no, it, it, and it was interesting too, because on that Facebook post before they took it down, I was watching and all of her friends that were from that time were posting like, yeah, this was the best. <laughs> I would so, be so proud if Grayson was that boy saying right? that. <laughs> I would yes. be like, oh honey, I'm so proud of you. Yes, yes, yes. And it changed her life. You know, so yeah, that, that says a lot. So I, I enjoyed reading her story. It's fun. It's definitely it's a fun a read. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there was mine. Um, the quote that you picked out for, for mine was what happened to my sweet Dasa Laura? And he exclaimed, she's gone. I proclaimed firmly. <laughs> <laughs> She's dead. Yes. Um, Laura, the story of being a little girl and Christmas morning and your dad bought that cheap knockoff Barbie car and you really wanted the Barbie car, car and then your mom bought it behind his back and pulled it out at the end of Christmas morning. Oh, we've all been there. Yes. You know, we always, it's interesting how we condition girls to be mm -hmm. submissive is we deny them their wants. Right, exactly. And that's, you know, when I put that story together and, and got in touch with my feelings, I saw where my people pleasing came from. You know, it, it was it, those kinds of moments. And that was just one out of something that probably happened on a very regular basis. So, you know, I, I feel compassion for myself that... Eh, and now I can look back and I can evolve and change. And that's the second part of my blog post where uh, actually body sex really helped me find my voice and how that's manifesting in family interactions now. Standing up for yourself, stating your pleasure, stating your boundary. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what body sex is all about. Who am I and what do I want and what life do I want to create for myself? It's all there for us. We yeah. just have to take it. 